like this. Embossed, I'm impressed. It's no bulk rate. You're holding an invitation for two to a gala party in New York being thrown by my publisher for a few of his best-selling authors, one of whom is moi. Wow. A party in your honor. I know the way you feel. I remember the magic night I was named Beaver of the Year. This, this is a little different, George. I know. You have to share the spotlight. I had it all to myself. <laughs> Uh, ben is flying us first class, and we're staying at the Manchester Park Hotel. Tick, the Manchester Park. Joanna, you're making a big deal out of a big deal. <laughs> and, and this party may be finally the chance to, to corner Ben and pitch my idea for my novel. Well, I can't wait. A weekend in my favorite city with a cute, cocky novelist. When do we leave? Uh, next weekend. Tick, we can't go next weekend. That's when Alice and Barney are coming here from New York. Honey, a gold invitation overrules a, a know-it-all salesman and his chatty wife. <laughs> or, or just call him at home and, and tell him to stay there. It's too late. They're on a tour of New England. All I know is that they're going to be here next weekend. Well, honey, couldn't we leave him a, a note, an apology, a, a couple of bucks or something? <laughs> oh, okay, I, I won't go to New York either. Oh, Dick, you're one of the guests of honor. You have to go. Joanna, I don't want any arguments. I'll, I'll go. <laughs> figure out is what to do with that extra plane ticket. Coffee? Stephanie, you are not going to New York. You have used up your vacation days for the next decade. It's just that the thought of you flying all alone makes me feel lonely and sad. No. Then I hope you have turbulence. You know, I've never been to New York in the winter or the spring or summer or fall. Oh, George, you'd love it. Central Park, the skyscrapers, the nightlife. Yes, that does sound exciting. But I'd never go there unless I was with somebody who knew their way around. <laughs> George, I, I'd love to have you come with me, but all, all I'm going to do is go to a, a dull book party with a lot of, uh, a lot of boring uh, publishing people. Uh, believe me, you'll, you'll have more fun just staying here. If you say so, Dick. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll go outside and whoop it up hauling wood. Dick, why don't you want to take George to New York with you? Honey, I'd love to take him to New York, but I'm going to a very uh, fancy, sophisticated party. Uh, George just wouldn't fit in. I'm, I'm, I'm protecting him. I understand. You're a snob. I am not a snob. I know George. And, and believe me, he'll be much happier staying home. <laughs> what do you say, George? You mean New York? Wow! <laughs> oh, my God! Stephanie, are you all right? No, I snagged my sweater. <laughs> oh. Well, don't just stand there. Call someone. Well, it's not exactly a 911 emergency. Well, you could at least call and let them tell you that. <laughs> Stephanie, I'm sorry you've had to work so hard, but I just want the inn to look nice for Alice and Barney's arrival today. Joanna, what have we gained if the inn looks lovely, but your maid looks like she just took a trip through fashion hell? Well, Joanna, do I look like my ticket? First class? You look big city to me, George. I know. I've just been reading up on New York. I don't know what to do first. I skate in Rockefeller Center, go to the top of the Empire State Building, or dig the scene down in Greenwich Village. Oh, I know the greatest Chinese restaurant in the village. New York, New York's a wonderful town. The Bronx is up and the battery. And my watch needs replacing. Good cover, honey, but I'm okay, believe me. Well, I'll call when we get to the hotel. Let's go, George. My first plane ride. Gee, I just hope there's the same number of people on each side so the plane will fly level. <laughs> no, no, George, you see... I, I hope so, too, George. <laughs> The flight was fine, Joanna, except 
George uh, wouldn't let me go to the bathroom because he, he was afraid I'd unbalance the plane. <laughs> he's, he's, out, he's out taking in the neighborhood. Yeah, and I, I'm making a, a few notes for, for my novel pitch. No, I'm, I'm not worried about George at the party. I, I came up with a great idea. He, he's not going. Yeah, I bought him a ticket to Cats. I am not a snob. Joanna, I went to a lot of trouble for George. Uh, Cats is sold out. I, I had to buy the ticket from some sleazy guy on the, on the street. <laughs> Joanna, come on, you can't tell me you, you miss sleazy people. Look, George is, is going to have a great time at the play. Joanna, stop using that word. Yes, the, the buildings are still tall. <laughs> But, but they're not gleamy, they're grimy. Oh, George, uh, George just walked in. I'll, I'll put him on. It's, it's Joanna. Oh. Hi, Joanna. Boy, is this a great place. You should see the buildings gleaming. <laughs> Gee, Dick, she's crying. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, honey. Yep, I blow your nose. Bye. Boy, Dick, this is a great city. All the cars, the people. <laughs> this sure is a toddling town. <laughs> George, I, I... I think that's Chicago. Gee, it sure seemed toddling. <laughs> hey, where do you see all the great souvenirs I bought? Oh, an, an Empire State Building thermometer. <laughs> Uh, I bet this baby's accurate. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I bought a, about a zillion postcards to send. George, you're in the most exciting city in the world. You aren't going to have time to sit down filling out postcards. Gee, I don't know, Dick. My friends might get kind of mad if I send them out blank. <laughs> oh, and here's the best of all. Ta-da! Utley elected Gotham mayor. I could take it to the party. Leave it lying around and just watch the laughter build. Uh, uh, George, uh, uh, about the party, I, uh, I got some great news. You, you, d you don't have to go. I, I, uh, I got you a ticket to the uh, sold-out Broadway hit, Cats. Cats? Fifty dollars. Dick, I can't let you spend fifty dollars on me. No, no, it, it's all right, George. It didn't cost me anything. It's a, it, it, it's a complimentary ticket from, from my publishing house. Gee, thanks. Boy, did I pick a great city to be mayor of or what? <laughs> but you'll be at that dull party all alone. I feel kind of guilty. But George, this is New York. You know, one of us should be having a fun evening. What a pal. George, what are you doing? That, that cost me... No, uh, nothing. I can't let you go to that awful party alone. You brought me to New York. Don't worry, Dick. I'm not going to leave your side all night. <laughs> Great. Poor Joanna. We've been waiting all day for Alice and Barney, and they're still not here. Poor, poor, stood up Joanna. <laughs> Stephanie, Alice, and Barney are good friends. They said they'd be here sometime today, and they will be. Of course they will. <laughs> Joanna, you can sit here pitifully hopeful all night long, or you could go out with Michael and me tonight. Stephanie, that's very nice of you. I think I could explain it to Michael in such a way that he wouldn't throw much of a tantrum. Thanks, but I think I'd better stick around here pitifully hopeful. Are you sure you won't change your mind? I'm sure. Thank you. You know, these little hot dogs are even better than the ones at Beanie Farrell's barn warming. You know, George, I, I wouldn't blame you if you left right now and tried to scotch tape together that, that cat's ticket. I know, I know I'm having a miserable time. Mr. Loudon, 
Your books are the best. Keep up the good work. That's all I can do to keep from running right out of here. <laughs> uh, may I have your attention, please? I'd like to welcome you to the 30th anniversary celebration of Kirkwood Press. <laughs> and we hope there are many more chapters to come. Did you get it, Dick? He's in the book business, and he said chapter. <laughs> and now, I'd like to introduce some of the brightest lights in our literary family. <clears throat> First, our diet author, Dr. Harriet Weston. Our how-to maven, Dick Loudon. <laughs> and our favorite poet, Lalo. Lalo will grace us this evening with a reading from his latest collection. Running on the beach, I notice something odd. The tide comes in, the tide goes out, it never stays. <laughs> Just like my friends. God, I'm lonely, thank you. I'd be embarrassed to come if I was his handyman. So nice of you to come. Oh, Ben, good to see you again. This is a, this is a great party. <laughs> yeah, it's really neat. People aren't shoving each other to get at the eats. Is this a friend of yours, Dick? Yes, yes. Uh, ben Williams, this is uh, George Utley. Nice to meet you, George. Uh -huh. Hello. <laughs> Could I have our three authors over here, please? I'd like to take some publicity stills. Mr. Loudon? Well, go ahead, Dick. I'll take care of your friend. So, Ben, where are you putting your pits? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lalo, smile, please. This is as happy as I get. I thought I'd never be able to pull myself out of that sooty chimney. But then when the Hawkins kid built that fire, it gave me the extra oomph to get myself free. <laughs> Anything like that ever happened to you, Ben? Uh, excuse me, George. Uh, Dick, uh, you didn't say that Sir George is your handyman. Yes, 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 he is. Uh, George was just telling me about life in Vermont. Great. Guess what, Dick? Ben's family has a summer home near where my grandmother lived. I remember she loved to paint. She'd have us pick blueberries, then she'd crush them to make her watercolors. Nothing caught the summer sky like my grandmother's blueberry paint. Homegrown art. Did you keep any of the paintings, George? No. We ate every one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Dick, uh, George is quite a fellow. <laughs> yes, an interesting combination. Handyman, wit. Oh, you, you noticed. Thank you so much for bringing him. Uh, ben, can I talk to you for a minute? Yes, Yeah, uh, there's something I, I think you're going to be pretty excited about. I, uh, I have an idea for a book. A novel. You're pitching a novel? Yeah, I thought now would be the, the perfect time, you know, to, to run it by you. Dick, I'm very surprised. I mean, a lot of yokels think this is where it all happens, but um, a literary party is the worst place to try and pitch an idea for a novel. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I'm missing some of George's stories. <laughs> so they asked me, where does this road go? And I said, the road hasn't moved since I've been here. Barney? No, ma'am. I'm Larry. <laughs> this is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. You guys never knock. It's a funny thing. Come 10 o'clock, no matter how politely we enter, we get a better reception when we knock. <laughs> 
What can I quickly do for you, fellas? Well, we heard about you being upset about your fair-weathered friends not showing up, so we thought we'd come by and coax them pearly whites out into the open. <laughs> to start, let's play a friendly game of feel and tell. I think I'll pass on that one, Larry. It's just as well. One touch of them scales and you would have guessed. <laughs> I know. Staring game. <laughs> we won that one. Fellas, I appreciate what you're doing, but I'm just not in the mood to compete tonight. That's okay. As a backup, we've prepared a little playlet for you. So just park it over here on the couch. And enjoy our version of On the Town, featuring Daryl as Gene Kelly, and Daryl as Frank Sinatra, and yours truly as Jules Munchen. So, let's follow the adventures of those three happy-go-lucky sailors with 24-hour shore leave to see New York and get girls. <laughs> Beep, beep, taxi. Well, here we are in the heart of New York City. Look at all them gleaming buildings. I knew you'd like this picture of the Chrysler building. <laughs> Wish you or anyone were here. Oh, hi, Dick. Thought maybe you'd be asleep. Who can sleep with all that damn gleam? Uh, I'm sorry you got a headache and couldn't come with us. Ben really showed me the town. Yeah, it was really hard to turn down his offer to, to tag along. <laughs> no, he meant it, Dick. There was plenty of room in the limousine. If you, uh, you don't mind, George, I think I'll, I'll go to sleep. Okay, Dick. I'll tell you all about Madison Square Garden in the morning. What, what, what about Madison Square Garden? Uh, we caught the last couple of minutes of the Knicks game. Boy, it was so exciting. I even made a basket. You, sh you shot a basket from the floor of Madison Square Garden? Yeah. It didn't count, though. The game was over, and we were just messing around. <laughs> After that, we went to an art gallery in Soho. And guess who was there? George, there are eight million people in New York City. Why don't you just tell me? Woody Allen. Woody Allen? You know, the little guy in bananas. I know who he is. I made him laugh, Dick. I don't, I don't believe this. You were having the time of your life, and I, I was watching bridge and tunnel traffic on the 10 o'clock news. That's why I came back home. We were all at Sardi's, but I knew you were stuck back here all by yourself. I mean... I wouldn't have even gotten to see New York if it hadn't been for my best friend, Dick. George, um, I'm, not, I'm not such a, a, a great friend. I, um, I, I have a confession to make. Did you break my Empire State Building thermometer? <laughs> no, no, George. Um, I, I didn't want you to, to come with me to New York Th this, this, this one time. I, uh, I, I was afraid that you wouldn't, you wouldn't fit in at, at the party. And then, you know, you, you'd be uncomfortable and, and, and they, you know, they'd be uncomfortable and, and maybe, you know, maybe I might, you know, <clears throat> might even be a little, little uncomfortable. I understand, Dick. You're kind of a snob. Well, I don't think I'd use that word. Although everyone else seems to grab onto it. But, but they, they all loved you. 
And, and even if they hadn't, I, I mean, I was, I was wrong to worry. I mean, I, w I was a... I, w I was a snob. Boy, Dick, I can't believe it. I know, George, and you must really hate me. No, how could I hate you for feeling exactly the way I did? Huh? Remember the first Beavers meeting I took you to? I was on pins and needles all night. I thought you'd embarrass me and say the wrong thing. And, and all, all your worries were for nothing. Well, the important thing, Dick, is you finally fit in. <laughs> anyway, thanks for inviting me to New York, even if you were worried. It's been the greatest night of my life. Well, I'm, I'm glad it was, George. Y you know, I'm, I'm feeling... Uh, feeling a lot better now. After all, we are in the greatest city in the world. What, what, what do you say we get dressed, George, and uh, we find one of those all-night delis, just, just the two of us? Gee, after Sardi's, that'd be sort of a letdown. <laughs> Good night, Dick. Good night, George. What, what, what did I say to the beavers? with Alice and Barney. They were having so much fun up in Maine, they ran out of time and went right back to New York. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. You stayed home this whole weekend and still never got to see Alice and Barney. It's okay. I told them we'd see them in New York next weekend. We, we can't see them next weekend. I know. <laughs> Dick! You're back! I'm glad you're home. So? So, so what? So, did you bring me a gift? <laughs> and you thought I'd forget. Thank you. with an inane tourist saying on it. Let's see it on. Okay.